Thank you for that, Gitika. Um, thank you for that, Gitika. I don't think I'm the moderator. I think at this point, all of us are moderators. The way the conference has gone over the last two days, I have to say I'm having goosebumps. And I'm having goosebumps because I don't know how many of you have come and said to me that the discussions have been absolutely amazing, r incredible, rich. Uh, our governing council member used the word, you know, this has been so amazing. And he's Italian, so you can see his words are, you know, it's not just his words, but his actions as well. And I get goosebumps because, of course, you know, when you're trying to organize something this large, uh, this important, trying to see all of you engaged is what makes us happy. And I've had people come and say, look, I go to conferences to network. I don't go and listen. I mean, you know, I know it all. And even those people have said, and these are people who are, you know, more gray than me, maybe, who've come and said, I actually have sat and learned something. And I think that is the value that the coalition brings. And that is the value I think all of us, all of you have contributed to. So first of all, I'd love to have a round of applause for everybody who's here <laughs> online for this session. I also have the privilege to invite some very esteemed people on stage. I'm going to do that first. So I, I'm going to read out and invite everybody to come join me on stage. I will do a very quick summary presentation. It's not really a presentation. You're not going to learn a whole lot except see some nice images. We have a fantastic speaker online who we'll listen to. I won't share with that with you yet. And then we'll go start to close the session. So with that, I'm going to invite first the Honorable Mr. Joveska Vokia, the Assistant Minister Rural and Maritime Development and Disaster Management from the Government of Fiji. Sir, can you join me? Yeah. Next, I'm going to invite Ambassador Jones, charge the affairs at the U.S. Embassy to Delhi. Ma'am. <laughs> Mr. Seppo Nurmi is the Deputy Head of Mission at the European Delegation to Bhutan and India. Sir. We do have Mr. Damien Said, but of course this is New Delhi and traffic is horrendous and he happens to be coming in a few minutes. Uh, in the meantime, I'll also like to invite the two co-chairs for CDRI's Executive Committee, Mr. Kamal Kishore, who is the Member Secretary for Disaster Management Authority of India, and India's co-chair to the CDRI's Executive Committee, and Ms. Veena Reddy, who is Mission Director, USAID India, and again, US co-chair to CDRI's Executive Committee. So thank you very much for joining me. I will do a slight presentation. I promise this is probably the last presentation you'll see for the evening, so bear with me. Let's have the presentation. You know, we started off yesterday with two really, really, really powerful speakers. We had the Prime Minister of India talk about, you know, infrastructure development must leave no one behind. I think that message is incredibly important because we sometimes forget that infrastructure, end of the day, is about providing services to people. And his point of nobody leaving behind is about inclusiveness. And that's where we started. We had the Prime Minister of Bangladesh talking about how problems are global and the solutions also have to be global. I think the coalition, importance of the coalition is about the global reach and the global solutions and the global problems that we're all collectively thinking about. So that's where we started, you know. Hopefully from there that one doesn't go down, one goes up and we actually did. So that set a fantastic stage for the conversations to start. We had an amazing participation in the room, but also virtually. We had people from 158 countries participate online. Now, can you even imagine? I mean, I forgot, I've forgotten how many countries there are in the world at this point, and somebody can probably tell me. But 158 is definitely more than half, right? And that's the amount of people who've actually participated online to listen to what all of us have been discussing. And that's impressive. 
we also had 257 people in the room, and that itself is impressive. You know, I think it's not easy to have people come to the room, talk, discuss, and we had 257 people. 2,000 plus participants virtually. So again, you know, this is the number of people we are starting to reach by this conference. It's not just the people in the room; it's people who are listening to us online. And all of this is getting recorded. So there will be more and more and more people, hopefully, listening to this mess the messages that we are all sharing. We planted 145 trees. Why did we do that? Because we decided that every speaker who comes on stage has a tree planted in their name. Which means we had 145 people who actually participated, and I'm not counting the people who participated virtually, though maybe we have to find a way of planting trees for them as well. So you know that's the number of people who've participated and shared. We've had amazing discussions on the three pillars that we chose. You know the whole focus of this uh, two-day conference was about solutions, solutions, solutions. And what you're seeing here is not justifying all of the discussions we've had. You know, I have to give credit to my team, who's been quickly, quickly, quickly drafting something so I can say something. But I want to acknowledge that this is just very, very simple points from the richness of discussions that we've had. We've talked about inclusiveness. We've talked about informative systems. We've talked about data. We've talked about risks. We've seen examples from Canada, from India. From Chile, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We've seen all of these examples, which are real solutions, real things that are being tried out in different infrastructure sectors around the world. We talked about resilient infrastructure assets, you know, systems, but then also the assets. I heard a wonderful phrase yesterday, which you know had not come to me, which is engineering with nature. We all talk about nature-based solutions, but the statement "engineering with nature" is also starting to say that nature itself is providing a solution. And when we think about engineering our problems, it's not just just about physical infrastructure; it's also this engineering with nature. A lot of discussions about the assets, and we talked about finance. You know, we heard from small island development states where talked about how skills are getting lost because people get trained and then they migrate. We heard about how, in small island developing states, infrastructure is much more expensive. So when you think about financing infrastructure, we have to consider these additional costs that some of the most vulnerable countries in the world actually face. We actually had a wonderful discussion about the strategic direction for CDRI. Day before yesterday evening, the Governing Council approved our strategic plan for the next four years, and we spent. Two hours in a room, deliberating with all of you. What does that mean? What does that mean for the coalition that we want to build? What does that mean for the training and capacity building we need to provide? And what does that mean for on-the-ground action that can bring change to countries that are part of our member countries? And all of you participated in that, and I appreciate all of the input that we've received, which is handful and appreciate and important. We made a number of announcements. So, for anybody who's not yet gone online, and I think all of these should be online by now, we launched a study on the resilience of airports. We launched a lexicon. You know, we all talk about disaster resilient infrastructure, but if I take a quiz, I suspect all of you may have different versions of the answer. Well, the lexicon, open it. There are about 60 definitions. Read it because by the next ICDRI, we'll actually quiz you on it. That's online as well. We launched an amazing initiative with support from the U.S. government. We launched what we call IRAX, which is the Infrastructure Resilient Academic Academic Exchange. All of you have participated in the discussions, but the whole notion of exchange amongst academia to 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 bring out actionable solutions. I think a lot of things we heard about was actionable solutions, and I think we're going to start looking at how does academic partnerships start to deliver on this promise. On the need on the ground, so that's starting with the support from US. We've had other countries in indicate support as well, and we're really excited to get that off the ground. And we announced my favorite part: we announced our third round of fellows. We've been supporting fellows for the last two years. We've supported 77 fellows so far from 15 countries. 
Well, today you heard the names of a number of new fellows who will be joining CDRI's fellowship program. So these are four major announcements that we've made in the last two, three days, two days. I'm going to end here because we have a packed agenda, but I want to thank you with the quote I heard, which is that climate and disaster resilience is a shared journey with partnerships among private, public, communities, and others. Thank you very much. It's now my pleasure, and I hope you're there. Um, it's my pleasure to invite Professor Jeffrey Sachs, I think all of you know him, to give us some comments on what he heard, but also what his vision for resident infrastructure is. So with that, over to you, Professor Sachs. So you're on mute. Uh, uh, <laughs> not on my side. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Oh, good. Okay, very good. Well, what a, what a great honor and pleasure it is to be part of ICDRI 2023. And what an amazing summary you just gave uh, us uh, of the, the fantastic presentations uh, during this meeting. Uh, I can't add to the wisdom of the uh, specific uh, solutions on technology, uh, on uh, ways to uh, combine technology with, uh, with nature uh, in the highly varied contexts of those 158 nations. And, and indeed, it's well over half uh, out of the 193 member states. Uh, you've got uh, a, a very, very good share of them participating in this meeting. But what I can add as an economist is uh, a word about the financing side. We face a financing crisis in general for sustainable development. The Sustainable Development Goals, the Paris Agreement, the protection for resilient infrastructure are all desperately behind uh, time schedules and human needs. Overwhelmingly, in my view, not because we lack solutions or will, but because we lack financing. This is especially true, of course, for the low income countries and the lower middle income countries that lack budgetary resources and investment grade credit ratings that would enable them to tap capital markets on acceptable terms. Uh, as a, an SDG advocate for UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres, I see every day the financing crisis of the sustainable development goals overall. It's uh, hitting us with infrastructure. This shortfall of finance hits us with energy systems transformation, which is urgent, of course, for meeting the climate objectives. It's hitting us in delivery of social services, in even having children in school, in universal health coverage. And it hits us in basic access to basic services, uh, fresh water, safe water, sanitation, uh, transport, digital access, uh, and many other uh, needed services. So what you are grappling with, with uh, resilient infrastructure is a part of a large financing puzzle, which is how are we going to enable low income and lower middle income countries to access the capital needed for the investments that you have been outlining and discerning during the conference. My uh, assignment uh, in the UN system is to help mobilize uh, a significant increase of financing for all of these objectives. UN Secretary General Guterres has called for an SDG stimulus, meaning a major expansion of financing to enable all of the SDG program, including resilient infrastructure, to be achieved. And this is core priority for the UN system. 
there will be four important conferences this year where I want CDRI to feature prominently, where I want the issue of resilient infrastructure to feature prominently. The first conference will be in Paris uh, on June 23. This is a conference of the G20 and the uh, French government uh, that will be hosted by the G20 and President Macron in Paris on financing the climate agenda. We have massive shortfalls on financing mitigation, financing adaptation, and financing losses and damages. So June 23 is a first critical opportunity. The next critical opportunity, perhaps the most important, will be in Delhi on September 10 and 11, when India hosts and presides as president of the G20 at the summit level. I am counting on the G20 countries to come forward with real financing commitments. This has not happened yet. This is top of agenda, in my view, for the G20, which after all is the group of the largest economies in the world, the leading economies that have to provide the solutions for finance for the sustainable development agenda. The third conference will be the mid term review of the sustainable development goals at UN headquarters about two weeks after the G20 summit. This will be a head of state summit on the sustainable development goals. We are way behind the SDGs and the overwhelming reason for being behind is the lack of financing for at least half the world. And the fourth major event this year on financing will be COP28 in November and early December in Dubai, hosted by the Emirates, of course. And that will focus on finance, on reaching solutions for losses and damages, on reaching solutions for the rich countries to finally fulfill 14 years late, the commitment to show how <clears throat> the 100 billion, which is just a down payment on climate action, is actually going to be fulfilled. So to my mind, we have to see 2023 as a year of fundamental breakthrough. We've gone on year after year without a solution to the real issue. You have been describing all of the technological pathways, all of the ways to build resilient infrastructure. And we have pathways for decarbonizing energy systems as well, but we don't have the means of implementation because these investments are not affordable in half the world. To my mind, the single most important action to take during this year is a commitment by the major countries for a massive scale up of financing from the multilateral development banking system. This means the World Bank, the Asian Development Bank, the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, the BRICS New Development Bank based in Shanghai the African Development Bank, the Inter-American Development Bank, the Latin American Development Fund, and others. These banks in total operate currently at a scale of about 100 to 150 billion annual lending flow. This should be a trillion dollars. And resilient infrastructure should be a core part of that scale up. So we need a massive increase of financing from the multilateral development banking system, which was designed for exactly this purpose. That requires paid in capital by the major countries, especially the rich countries, so that these banks can do their job, borrow at AAA ratings and on lend to their member states, to those 158 countries, plus uh, the uh, additional 30 
uh, seven, which will bring us to all 193, so that countries can make the vital investments to achieve the goals that we have set. The MDB system is the core of this. Let me just conclude by saying I am absolutely counting on and thrilled by the presidency of the G20 being held by India this year, followed by Brazil in 2024 and South Africa in 2025. Three BRICS countries, 2023, 2024, 2025, that can reform the global financial architecture so that it underpins truly the sustainable development and the future we want. Prime Minister Modi has said that the G20 commitment is Vasudeva Kuntumbakand, uh, that the world is one family, great uh, ancient uh, Hindu wisdom. Uh, and I think that that wisdom is what can carry us forward. We need a world for all, as the Prime Minister said in this conference, and we need financing for all. Thank you so much for letting me share these uh, thoughts with you today. Professor Sachs, I can ask you lots of questions. I won't, <laughs> because you know I can't follow up with what you've just said. That is, you've, you've kind of hit the nail on the head. But since you've talked about G20 a few times, I'm going to invite the co-chair of CDRI, uh, Executive Committee Kamal Kishore, who actually also happens to be the chair of the G20 DRR working group. Kamal, over to you. Thank and, you, and thank I, you, I Amit. Um, I'll, I'll have to beg my leave uh, for another meeting, but thank you for your great work, and please count on me for all of these uh, meetings in, in the months ahead. You're on such a vital course, and any support I can give, please count on me. Mr. Sachs, the Professor Sachs, that's what we need. Thank you so much. And I know you had time to run. Thank you. Yeah. Kamal? Thank you. Thank you, Professor Sachs, for that very inspirational speech. Uh, ten minutes of possibilities, ten minutes of excitement, ten minutes of underlining the relevance of the work of the CDRI, the importance of this conference. What he highlighted was that what we are doing here is not a niche, boutique or esoteric project. It is really mainstream to our development discourse. It is almost hitting at the existential issues that humanity presently faces. So if we get the resilient infrastructure story right, we will help improve the lives and livelihoods of millions of people across the world. It is fundamental to ensuring not just human well-being, but also human dignity, you know, ensuring people who have never had access to reliable water, health, sanitation, education, that they have these services and they have these services in a reliable, sustainable fashion. So that was really a, a, a reminder and sort of a reaffirmation of the, the enterprise we have embarked on here. This has been a phenomenal ICDRI. I am an ICDRI veteran. I have attended all five of them. And this is undoubtedly the best. If you don't believe me, there are at least six people in this room who were there in ICDRI 1 as well. In those days, it was called IWDRI. And then we scaled the ambition. Talking about scaling the ambition, uh, we have 158 countries who participated. That's 85% of the countries that have signed on to Sendai Framework. I'm wondering where are the remaining 29? We've got to get them in the next one. Uh, so we have to have 100% coverage when it comes to ensuring resilience of infrastructure systems. As has been repeatedly said during the pandemic years, no one is safe till everyone is safe. Global infrastructure systems are interconnected. So let's try to continue to expand the partnership. It's really gratifying from the perspective of Government of India. We really made a right call a few years ago and we've put our money in the right place. This is an investment which is already paying off. Forget about the other streams of work that CDRI does. Just ICDRI, a conference 
focused on resilient infrastructure as a product is a unique offering. It generates excitement. It, gen it generates buzz. It brings together people from across the world, across different strata of society to have this important conversation. Just that product itself is valuable and there are so many other things that we are doing. So it's been great and it's really good to work with the US. You know, our co-chairs, you know, we speak almost daily, uh, if not twice a day, uh, on how to sort of keep things moving, uh, how to provide the support we need to provide to the CDRI Secretariat. With that, over to you, Veena, and then we will bookend this conference. Uh, we inaugurated it. We will try to close it and have a bit of a celebration here this evening for the fantastic work that the CDRI Secretariat has done in the last two days, but also in the run-up to it. Remember, in the last three months, it's not the only thing they've been doing. They've had a big presence in COP27. They've been supporting us in the uh, management of the G20 Working Group on Disaster Risk Reduction. So really, a huge applause, a huge appreciation to the CDRI Secretariat, the team, and the partners for putting this together. Veena. Fantastic. Thank you, Kamal. I wholeheartedly agree that it's been fantastic to work together. It is uh, a pleasure to uh, get your WhatsApp messages and <laughs> phone calls uh, and, and to uh, inundate you with the same, uh, as well as Amit. We have all worked so uh, well together as part of a uh, team, including all of the CDRI members. Uh, it has really been fantastic. And to um, have all of this work together, come together and see so many countries come together, galvanized with a singular purpose is really amazing. Uh, we've heard uh, all sorts of ideas of how to uh, work better. Uh, we have so many amazing professionals, government officials here who uh, s subscribe to the goals of CDRI and this uh, conference's theme of uh, resilient and inclusive uh, infrastructure. We've heard no, leave no one behind. Uh, we've also heard about how local engagement is so key. Uh, I think that also gets to some of uh, the expensive, you know, how expensive it is to uh, fund infrastructure projects. Uh, but the more we can engage with local communities, the more we can use their knowledge, use their systems in ways that uh, allow us to be more efficient and better. Um, I'd like to add one more phrase. Uh, you know, we heard the, uh, was it the engineer with nature? Uh, we also uh, at USAID have uh, a philosophy, uh, I don't think we invented it, of do nothing about them without them. Uh, so meaning engage your local, like, engage your stakeholders. The ones who are most affected by your intervention should be the ones uh, driving the solutions. Uh, and, they, and our systems need to respond inclusively to them. And that's what this whole conference has been about for me. It's bringing together governments, communities, civil society, academics, private sector. And as we're increasingly realizing, Mother Nature is also a stakeholder here, and we need to respect uh, the power of nature as well as uh, treat it as an ally. Uh, so I'm very excited to hear about all these solutions. And I'm also excited that this conference really is looking at how do we move to solutions. Uh, I've been so impressed. Uh, I think. Uh, if anyone can do it, it's this group of amazing professionals, both here at the conference as well as online. So thank you all for coming, and uh, I'd like to introduce the next speaker, um, Mr. Jovesa Vodia, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Jovesa Vosia from uh, the Honorable Assistant Minister from the Government of Fiji for Rural and Maritime Development and Disaster Management. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Excellencies, uh, uh, members of this uh, very important uh, forum. Uh, thank you very much for inviting uh, me to be one of the, the co-speakers for the closing address for this forum. I was really surprised having coming from a very small country, Fiji, the population, uh, we haven't uh, reached one million uh, yet, and uh, to be invited to take part in the, this very important uh, 
CDRI forum. Uh, it's an honor for me, uh, not only for me uh, in Fiji, I think uh, with other members of uh, my friends from uh, Samoa, we from uh, the South Pacific. Uh, uh, it was a uh, very important uh, decision for to send me over for this uh, very important uh, conference. As uh, a member of uh, parliament and assistant minister in uh, my country, we are having our parliament session for the last two weeks, uh, last week and this week. And uh, I had a talk with my prime minister and. Uh, as for my release to attend uh, this uh, very important conference and uh, he said that uh, he, he has agreed because of the importance of uh, having Fiji and uh, other small island development countries be part of this uh, uh, big international conference. Uh, I know that uh, we have uh, a lot of differences uh, in size, in the population, in our economic uh, achievements, but uh, one thing that uh, uh, I admire the value that we shared, most of the values, that we have a common bond, that we are countries that are affected by natural disasters, year in and year out. We are countries that are, are vulnerable to the effects of climate change. And I'm uh, here uh, this evening um, being proud to be part of this uh, conference and uh, especially to talk about the challenges that we in Fiji and I'm sure other Pacific Island uh, states, small island, Pacific Island small states uh, are facing the same problem. I think uh, listening to some of uh, the, the very important uh, lectures and uh, interventions in the last uh, two days, one thing that uh, most of us agreed and we have talked it over uh, with our counterparts from uh, Samoa and the delegation that comes over from Fiji and I, 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 I firmly agree that uh, believe that this is uh, the same for all the small Pacific Island countries is in terms of uh, the financing the financing uh, to, to try and uh, recover from uh, uh, natural disasters that occur year in and year out. And I say for Fiji, uh, every year there's cyclones and floodings. This year alone, uh, we had about four floodings and we have spent considerable amount of money of uh, our finance in trying to recuperate, trying to recover, restoration uh, of the works. We haven't completed the restoration for the previous cyclones uh, the big ones in uh, 2016, Cyclone Winston. And straight after that, we had uh, Yasa and uh, Anna. And whilst we are still trying to recover from those big cyclones, yet uh, small cyclones and other floodings, other natural calamities do happen year in and out. Year out. And uh, one of the biggest challenges for us is finance. And uh, that is a very... Uh, important uh, uh, issue that we are coming to this forum to discuss and as a member of uh, this uh, uh, ICDRI uh, if we can help each other in terms of financing uh, especially our infrastructure, uh, infrastructure in uh, our small Pacific Island uh, states. Uh, even with uh, the limited uh, uh, finance that we have uh, in uh, our Pacific Island communities, uh, we make sure that we look after each other. Uh, this year, uh, there was a, a cyclone and flooding in New Zealand. Uh, we sent, Fiji sent, a contingent of about uh, 30 plus, including some soldiers, those from the fire brigade and some staff from the National Disaster Management Office. Uh, they spent uh, almost uh, three weeks in New Zealand and upon returning to Fiji then we had the devastating effects of uh, the cyclones that hit uh, Vanuatu. Again, uh, we sent some of our people to Vanuatu and they are still there in Vanuatu as we speak uh, at the moment. Uh, just uh, receiving some uh, information from uh, our 
people back home that uh, uh, the Vanuatu has requested that uh, the, 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 we extend the term of uh, our officers who are there uh, in, uh, trying in the restoration exercise in Vanuatu. So you see, uh, ladies and gentlemen, with the small economies that we have, uh, we try and look after each other, try and help each other. We call it the Vuvale Partnership. Vuvale Partnership. Vuvale is a family, as uh, alluded to by the Prime Minister of, uh, of uh, India, Mr. Narendra Modi, that uh, the whole world is a family. We are part of a family. So we should look after each other. And uh, that is one of uh, the, the take-home uh, uh, issues that uh, we from Fiji, and I believe from uh, our friends from Samoa too, would like to take home, and uh, uh, is uh, the issue about the assistance towards the uh, infrastructure, infrastructure uh, in our small island countries. The, especially the, the infrastructure, the devastation effects on our infrastructure that has chewed up a lot of our economy year in and year out. Uh, I think I'll stop at that uh, before I can, uh, if uh, there are some questions, then I'll be able to answer them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Assistant Minister Vadea. Those uh, are very powerful and compelling stories that you've shared. And uh, realizing that you're able to do this uh, Bubale partnership, even in the face of continuing disasters, uh, continuing cyclones, is truly inspiring. And uh, we really thank you for sharing your experiences. Uh, of the challenges that Pacific Island small states experience, and even among, uh, even uh, under such threats, we're able to provide support to New Zealand, and I believe you said Vanuatu as well. Um, I also want to congratulate CDRI for launching and operationalizing the infrastructure for resilient island states and setting up the Infrastructure Resilient Accelerator Fund uh, that will help support IRIS, uh, the infrastructure for small island states. And uh, hopefully uh, we'll see more and more partnerships with small island states to provide technical assistance on flood, landslide, cyclone risks, um, and to produce safer, more resilient infrastructure that takes you into account local needs. And uh, with that, I'd turn it back to Kamal. Thank you. Uh, let me also add my words of thanks to the Honorable Minister for traveling all the way from Fiji, from Suva to here in, uh, here to New Delhi for this fifth edition of ICDRI. Uh, there are colleagues from small island developing states uh, in the Caribbean, in the Indian Ocean, in the Pacific, that are here present in person. And of course, many of them have joined through uh, the video link. I think that engagement is really important to validate some of the things that are being planned under IRIS, the Infrastructure for Resilient Island States Initiative of CDRI, and really ensuring that it is meeting your needs. And it is not something which is imagined in isolation from the people of small island nations themselves. So, so that's very great and thank you very much for those remarks. Uh, CDRI has been very lucky with the kind of leadership it has had in the last few years. We've had the advantage of UK's leadership over the last, over the first two years uh, where important initiatives were started, IRIS was launched at COP26, we had some experimental work with the British Council of India on uh, British Council based here in India to look at how academic programs could be developed in this space. We started to work on the global biennial report on infrastructure resilience. And after the first two years, now the leadership of US in this endeavor has been truly remarkable. Those of you who have heard Administrator Samantha Power speak, she really says that let's supercharge our resilience efforts. And the, those words carry a lot of energy, a lot of seriousness, and a sense of urgency. And in one year, in one short year, there are many interesting new things we've done. We, there was an important announcement today 
uh, yesterday of Infrastructure Resilience Academic Exchange Network, which has a big aspiration of producing 1,000 professionals that are conversant with multidisciplinary approaches to imagining the infrastructure of future. We've also had a few other initiatives that are going on with the U.S. A lot of capacity in the U.S. U.S. Army Corps of Engineers participated in ICDRI, dialogue with Department of Energy, Department of Transportation. So all of that is very exciting and it's really, I'm pretty certain, going to take us to the next level. On that note, I would like to invite Ambassador Elizabeth Jones from the U.S. Embassy here in New Delhi to share her thoughts. Thank you very much. Thank you on behalf of the U.S. government for having me here at this, uh, to, to close this very important conference. I can see from the conversations that have been held so far that it's been very successful, and I'm already very energized to hear more about it. We certainly applaud India's leadership in forming the Coalition for Disaster Resilient Infrastructure for forming CDRI. The U.S. government is also <coughs> placing climate change at the center of our foreign policy and our development work. Through conferences like this one, we're raising awareness of the shared challenges we face and hoping to inspire action to build disaster resilient infrastructure around the world, which uh, is clearly underway as has been explained by the Vice Minister of Fiji. To make this happen, we must make it easier for governments, multilateral agencies, the private sector, and other infrastructure actors to work together to build resilient infrastructure systems. Of course, a key component of this cooperation will be the facilitation of private sector climate financing. The economic impact of natural disasters, as has already been mentioned this evening, is often catastrophic. So we must reduce the potential debt burdens for those who shoulder the brunt of these tragedies. As Professor Sachs has told us already this evening, we must ensure equitable and uninterrupted access to services delivered through the infrastructure we strengthen that includes housing, transportation networks, water systems, and hospitals, including members of the community at each step of the infrastructure transformation, will increase community ownership while ensuring services are tailored to community needs. As we do these things, building on the information and best practices shared with us over the past few days, we will build a more sustainable and resilient world. The United States is proud to be a founding member of the Coalition for Disaster Resilient Infrastructure, and we are fully invested in its success. USAID plans to continue a strong partnership with, CDR, with the CDRI Secretariat in coming years. And over the next year, with its leadership in both CDRI's Governing Council and Executive Committee. I'm also pleased to note that USAID is partnering with CDRI's Infrastructure Resilience Academic Exchange to link U.S. and Indian universities, integrate disaster res resilience in academic studies, and train the future leaders in this field. In addition, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers has partnered with India's National Institute of Hydrology to offer technical upskilling to local government officials that use flood mapping tools. Thank you to all of the members, member countries and organizations and prospective new members. Your engagement is critical. Congratulations on such a successful conference, and we look forward to hearing further results of the work that you've been doing the last few days. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ambassador Jones, and particularly for underlining the role of private sector in scaling up investments in infrastructure resilience. That was one of the major emerging themes of the current edition of ICDRI as well. We had a lot of engagement with private sector colleagues and a lot of frank exchange about, you know, what is it that will help us, you know, move the needle in that direction. So thank you. Thank you very much for these remarks, you know. Thank you, Ambassador Jones, for your leadership on this issue and uh, on development issues in general uh, and the relationship with India. Uh, I'd like to uh, next introduce uh, or request uh, Mr. Seppo Nurmi, Deputy Head of Mission, European Delegation to Bhutan and India to provide some remarks from the EU. Uh, thank you very much and uh, good afternoon to everyone. It's a real honor to be representing the European Union at this closing session 
As you have seen in the past two days, ICDRI serves as an important space for <coughs> practitioners, policymakers, and all stakeholders to coalesce, to share experiences and tools to help improve policy making and find better solutions to ultimately save human lives. The European Union is an institution that has always stood for collective action to address global challenges. We are a founding member of the CDRI and we have actively be, been engaged in the previous ICDRIs by sharing experience, best practices, tools and instruments. This year, we have been pleased to enable participation from the European Commission's Directorate General for International Partnerships and for European Civil Protection and Humanitarian Aid Operations, from the European Organization for the Exploitation of Meteorological Satellites, the European Centre for Medium Range, range Weather Forecasts, one of our partners in Nepal, namely People in Need, and finally a key partner in insurance, the Global Shield Solutions Platform. <laughs> Building on the remarks of Honourable uh, Minister Vosilia, we are also very much looking forward to the implementation of the Infrastructure for Resilient Island States Initiative of which the EU uh, is providing a grant of 5 million euros. Contributing to this initiative is one way we are delivering our own global gateway strategy. This is our approach for safe, secure, resilient and sustainable infrastructure through which we have many tools for promoting quality and resilient infrastructure globally. We are also aiming to build on our financial co cooperation with CDRI in future, hopefully in South Asia, which suffers from enormous disaster resilience issues. To complete my uh, closing remark, uh, remarks, I would like to address a question we received from CDRI Secretariat earlier this week on EU policies. Namely, they asked uh, us the following. The EU has some of the most progressive policies and measures to adapt and address climate and disaster risks across infrastructure sectors. What are the emerging priority areas for the EU where its significant capabilities in terms of technology, finance and know-how can be leveraged to deliver contextualized DRI solutions? Indeed, we, are, we as the EU have set ambitious climate policies. Our global development financing instrument, Global Europe, contains a 30% climate-related spending target. Two years ago, the, Commission, uh, the European Commission adopted its new EU strategy on adaptation to climate change, setting out how the EU becomes climate resilient by 2050. It has four principal objectives. To make adaptation smarter, swifter, and more systemic, and to step up international action on adaptation to climate change. That strategy prioritizes nature-based solutions, including in our work with international partners, and we endorse the leader's pledge for nature which has a transformative ro roadmap in this regard. With more frequent and impactful disasters, we have re recognized the need for stronger coordination between humanitarian and development policies, particularly to support communities at all stages as they respond to, recover from, and reconstruct construct after disasters, and we are taking more of a nexus approach in our response to disaster and climate-related displacement. We were reminded by one of the panelists yesterday that sharing is caring. 
This is really the point of us being a part of CDRI. It allows not just the valuable space for policy discussion, but it also facilitates more tangible cooperation. For us, that co cooperation is manifested in many avenues. The importance of data has been discussed a lot and how more access is needed. And we have heard how valuable weather forecasting is. That's exactly where our Copernicus instrument, using Earth observation data, is helpful and free to use. Technological solutions are key, which is where our Horizon Europe program spurs research and innovation into clean innovative technologies and where our investment programs will channel confessional finance to SMEs in India to develop green technology through a new fund exchanging best practices with, the, with SMEs in Latin America. Know-how is fundamental and of which we try to share across the board. For example, we promote the development of standards and building codes that integrate climate change and disaster risk reduction perspectives and promote nature-based solution, solutions in the design of new infrastructures, such as through a new Team Europe initiative on climate change adaptation and resilience in Africa. Finally, and rightly so, we have heard a lot about finance and we have heard a lot about fragmentation. That is why we are financially supporting the Insure Resilience Global Partnership and the Global Shield Against Climate Risks Initiative. And that is why we are now expanding the use of financial guarantees into Asia, de-risking investment to build climate resilient infrastructure pipelines and delivering our global gateway strategy. With our burgeoning relationship with CDRI, we are looking forward to leveraging our instruments and tools to have even more concrete impact working together with fellow members to support our partners globally. Thank you very much to all you participants and in particular to the colleagues who have been in charge of organizing this event. Thank you. Thank you, Chargé Normie. Uh, thank you for expanding on the EU's financial commitments, but also the myriad of uh, technical expertise that you're bringing to these issues, whether it's uh, the space agency or uh, humanitarian workers, universities, uh, which is uh, similar to, as Ambassador Jones touched upon, bringing the entire uh, spectrum of uh, interested parties and experts in this area to, to, to help find solutions and very much take uh, your suggestion of stronger coordination between humanitarian development, uh, uh, response, uh, recovery, and then going to development as well and is very much needed and I think uh, CDRI has such a role to play in helping us bridge uh, those connections. How do we get to a more resilient system that will prevent the next humanitarian disaster or at least mitigate it? Thank you. Come on. I would like to add my words of thanks to you. Uh, you've been a wonderful supporter. With regards to IRIS, several years ago, EU was amongst the first CDRI partners to encourage CDRI towards doing something very focused for the small island developing states. And since then, our partnership has been not only about financial contribution, but also co-creating the agenda of the coalition itself. We did a joint event with Insure Resilience Global Partnership at COP26. There's a lot of discussion with Copernicus, how Copernicus capabilities can be used for designing, operating, maintaining infrastructure systems for resilience. There is, of course, obvious linkage with Global Gateway uh, Initiative and quotable quote from your speech on smarter, swifter, systematic approaches to disaster resilience. 
of infrastructure systems. That's exactly what CDRI aims to do as well. With that, let me now turn to France. Uh, France has been a key supporter of CDRI as well. We had, even before CDRI was established, uh, we had one conversation in Paris on the scope and nature of partnership that coalition could symbolize at Paris Peace Forum, uh, which is a, a unique forum which brings together global leaders from different regions of the world to address so many different issues. So thank you very much. Uh, you have also been a supporter of IRIS. I can see that we have colleagues from France seconded to the CDRI Secretariat and really driving IRIS from concept to practical action on the ground. Very much looking forward to your thoughts. Minister, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's, uh, it's a pleasure to be with you today. Uh, thank you for inviting me to, to attend the, the closing uh, session of this international conference on uh, disaster resilient infrastructure. Uh, my apologies for arriving uh, a bit late. Um, I could hear that the, the, the two days have been, uh, have been quite uh, informative, uh, inspiring, and, and fruitful. Uh, I'm sure that the, uh, the outcome of this conference will be uh, a valuable addition to the, the solutions that, database of CGRI. Um, so first of all, I want to express, to reiterate the, the support of France for, for CGRI. You kindly uh, mentioned um, Indeed, we, we appreciate the efforts, the work of CDRI uh, across the world to promote uh, disaster resilience. It is uh, crucial in today's world. Um, we are also proud, uh, indeed, to, to be directly involved in the IRIS uh, program you talk, talked about. Um, it has uh, triggered a uh, large uh, interest from uh, many stakeholders, so we, uh, we are on board and we continue. Um, to, uh, for, for a more uh, tangible uh, impact, we would like to share uh, some, some ideas uh, to explore more uh, synergies uh, with other similar international initiatives, um, such as uh, the Global Alliance for Buildings and Construction, Global ABC, which includes a working group dedicated to adaptation and resilience. We also have the Buildings Breakthrough, launched by France and uh, Morocco at the COP27 last, uh, last year, uh, with the aim uh, to make net zero and resilient buildings the new standard by uh, 2030. On the international level, through its uh, development aid and uh, climate finance, France support, supports many projects uh, contrib contributing to reduce uh, disaster risk in vulnerable countries. We are supporting the development of early warning systems in vulnerable countries through an annual contribution of 8 million euros to the CRUZ, standing for the Climate Risk and Early Warning Systems Initiative. We are also supporting the Global Shield Against Climate Risks, which will enhance financial protection in vulnerable countries. I would also like to highlight the summit for a new financing uh, pact. Uh, mentioned by Professor Sachs. Uh, indeed, we will organize this, this summit in Paris in June this year, in close coordination with India and the G20 uh, presidency, and with a strong focus on innovative finance for vulnerable countries. On the bilateral level, France and India are 
are successfully working together on the resilient Kerala program, reflecting our shared commitment to promote quality infrastructure governance and disaster resilience. Our Agence Française de Développement, development, uh, French Development Agency, is also very active in India to support several coastal and mountain uh, area uh, resilience programs. Uh, these are uh, key programs uh, for us in the Indo-French Partnership for the Planet. We have the Indo Strategic Partnership, celebrating this year 25 years, and we have a partnership for the planet. Let me conclude uh, by saying that I am confident that CGRI through this year's uh, conference is providing us with new synergies, ideas and deliverables. It will help us collectively to address the challenges of disaster resi resi resilience and climate change uh, adaptation. And uh, for that, you can, of course, count uh, on the French support. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Damien, for highlighting those initiatives that France has supported in India, the partnership with CDRI. Uh, it's very reassuring to hear that this is a partnership in which you are there for the long haul. It's not a short-term thing, so it's a sustained partnership uh, which will work to make CDRI strong organization that will deliver on its mandate and fulfill its uh, promises. Any final thoughts from you, Veena, before we close the day today? I'd just also like to thank um, uh, the Deputy Chief of Mission for his uh, remarks as well and the commitment of France uh, to these important issues. And thank you very much for inviting us all to Paris. Uh, we will uh, certainly look for innovative financing to get us there. And uh, I will say, I'm, uh, overall in this, uh, it seems that France has, agree, you know, has taken on this uh, importance of financing uh, development, uh, sorry, uh, resilient infrastructure. And we've heard around the room at this conference uh, about how these investments really save us all money in the end. Uh, these are not just uh, investments that make our infrastructure better, it also makes our economies stronger. So I'm looking forward, and I think many of the speakers have uh, touched upon that. So thank you very much. I uh, really want to express my gratitude to CDRI, uh, especially the Secretariat, for all the hard work. Uh, the more smooth, the more delicious the conference is, the more work that went into it. Uh, and I think that uh, the... Uh, Secretary did such a fantastic job in both curating amazing sessions and making sure that everything went perfectly and smoothly for in a hybrid environment. So kudos. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Veena, uh, for those words. So just a few words in closing on my own behalf, on behalf of my organization, National Disaster Management Authority. This is a very important initiative for us. We are committed to it uh, for the long term. Uh, this is something also uh, that will help us at home also. It's not only for international work, but we want to leverage CDRI to bring about change at home as well. You saw during the last two days, we had engagement with the state of Sikkim, how we do resilient health infrastructure. So uh, that is the kind of conversation we would like to take to other states of India as well and also transform the way we do infrastructure, social infrastructure, large economic infrastructure at home too. Uh, you heard yesterday's stage setting session uh, Dr. P. K. Mishra talk about the Gati Shakti project which is a multimodal connectivity project which brings together uh, the airline industry, uh, the airways, the roadways, the waterways uh, and railways, four or five different deeply established, deeply entrenched transport sectors together under one umbrella. We are trying to bring about institutional innovation which will 
help us think about infrastructure systems in a systemic way to address challenges of the 21st century. Uh, you also heard some specific examples of how uh, the dedicated freight corridor, for example, is looking at not just the risks that we know now, but also preparing itself to deal with uncertainties and surprises of the future. So we would like to serve our own 1.3 billion people with resilient, sustainable, dependable, quality infrastructure services. We would really like to lead this whole endeavor through example and not just by discussions. The discussions must lead to practical changes, transformation in the way we do things. And in this, I think if we work together, you know, we, we can have a much greater collective impact. There was a lot of thought put behind uh, in the way we chose our logo, our motto for the G20 presidency, which is that we are one world, one family, and we have one future. Thank you. So I think with that, we will close. But I do want to give a word of thanks to all of the team of the Secretariat that has really, really, really put in a lot of hard work to make it a success. So a good round of applause for everybody who's really contributed to this. And we're not leaving you just to run away. There is food outside, so I would love to see all of you stay on for dinner. Please join us after this. Thank you so much for joining us here. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Thank you, Damien. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yes. So I, I, I have to give you your trees. <laughs> Before I thank forget. You. Sorry, you start. Yeah. Thank you, Minister.